Hi everybody, this is Sissy. Today I'm going to read you the story of Rapunzel. Again, it's another fairy tale, so it'll start with Once Upon a Time and it'll end with Happily Ever After. Once upon a time there lived a man and his wife. They had all that they wanted in the world except for one thing. For many years they had longed to have a child whom they could love, yet no baby was born to them. At the back of their house was a window which looked out over a beautiful garden full of lovely flowers and fine vegetables. The garden was surrounded by a high wall. No one ever tried to climb the wall, for the garden belonged to a witch who was feared by everyone. One day, the wife stood at this window looking down into the garden. In one of the vegetable beds, she saw some fresh green salad. It looked so tempting that she longed to eat some. Every day that followed, she looked out of the window at the fresh green salad. The more she looked at it, the more she longed to eat it. Soon she did not want anything else to eat. She grew thin and pale because she knew she could not have the salad. Her husband grew worried when he saw how thin she'd become. What is the matter with you, dear wife? he asked. His wife pointed to the fresh green salad in the witch's garden. Ah, she sighed. If I cannot eat some of that salad, I shall surely die. Rather than let you die, replied the man, I shall climb into the witch's garden and bring you some salad. The man waited until twilight, then climbed over the high wall into the witch's garden. There he quickly gathered a handful of salad and scrambled back over the wall. His wife sat down at once and ate the salad. It tasted even better than she'd imagined. It tasted so good that by the end of the next day she was longing for more salad. So once more her husband felt that he must climb over the wall to fetch it for her. Waiting until twilight again, the man clambered over the wall and lowered himself into the garden. As his feet touched the ground, he nearly fell down with fright, for there stood the witch in front of him. How dare you come into my garden, she shouted angrily, and how dare you steal my salad? It was for my wife, replied the poor man. She longed so much for the salad that if she could not have had it, she would have pined away and died. When the witch heard the man's tale, she lost her anger and took pity on him. If what you say is true, she said, I will let you take as much salad as you wish, if you promise me one thing. When your wife has a child, you must give it to me. I shall treat it well and look after it like a mother. The poor man was so frightened that he agreed, and then he quickly gathered an armful of salad and scuttled back to his wife. Some time later, a beautiful baby girl was born to the man and his wife. That very same day, the witch appeared. She reminded the man of his promise, and she took the child away with her. The witch named the baby Rapunzel. As the child grew, she became the most beautiful girl in the world. When Rapunzel was 12 years old, the witch shut her up in a tower in the forest. This tower had neither a door nor a staircase, but right at the top there was one small window. When the witch came to visit Rapunzel, she stood at the foot of the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel had wonderful, long, fine hair the color of gold. Whenever she heard the voice of the witch, she threw her long braid of hair out the window. It was so long that it fell right to the ground. The witch could catch a hold of the hair as if it were a rope, and then she could climb up the wall of the tower and in at the window. When Rapunzel had been in the tower a few years, it happened that a prince rode through the forest. As he passed by the tower, he heard the sound of someone singing. The singing was so lovely that the prince stopped to listen. The song came from the top of the tower. It was Rapunzel singing to herself. The prince wanted to go into the tower to find the singer. He looked for a door, but not finding one, he rode sadly home. Yet the prince could not forget the sweet song, and he longed to sing the singer. Every day he returned to the forest and stood by the tower, listening to Rapunzel singing. One day, when the prince was standing behind a tree, the witch came to the tower. He heard her say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately, a long, thick braid of golden hair fell to the ground. The prince watched amazed as the witch climbed up the tower and in at the window. If that is the ladder by which to enter the tower, then I too will try it, said the prince to himself. The next day at twilight, the prince stood by the foot of the tower and cried, 
Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately, the braid of hair came tumbling down and the prince climbed up. Rapunzel was surprised and rather afraid when she found that a man had climbed up to her room in the tower. As for the prince, when he saw the beauty of Rapunzel, he was overjoyed. He talked kindly to her, and she soon lost her fear. He told her how, for many months, he had stood outside the tower every day, listening to her sweet singing. The prince asked Rapunzel if he might come to visit her again, and she replied, Come to see me each evening, for the witch comes only during the day. So for many months the prince visited Rapunzel every evening, and they grew to love each other. After a while, the prince asked Rapunzel to marry him, and she replied, I will gladly do so. Then they talked together of how Rapunzel could get out of the tower. At last, Rapunzel thought of a plan. Every evening when you come to see me, she said to the prince, bring a skein of silk. I shall weave the silk into a ladder. When it's long enough to reach the ground, I shall come down, and then you can carry me away on your horse. They agreed on this plan. Every night the prince brought a fresh skein of silk, and every day Rapunzel wove a little more of the ladder. During all this time, the witch knew nothing of the prince's visits to Rapunzel. Then one day, after the witch had climbed up the tower by the, by the braid of hair, Rapunzel spoke without thinking. How is it, good mother, she asked, that you feel so much heavier than the prince? Oh, you wicked child, cried the witch. I thought I'd separated you from all the world, and now I find you have deceived me. In her anger, the witch seized a pair of scissors and cut off Rapunzel's beautiful hair. Then she took the poor girl away to a desert where she left her crying. That same night, the witch returned to the tower. She fastened Rapunzel's hair to a, to a hook above the window. The prince arrived and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then the witch threw the braid out of the window. The prince climbed up and found himself face to face, not with his beautiful Rapunzel, but with the angry witch. Oh, cried the witch, mocking him, you've come to find your lady love, but she's gone and you will never see her again. The prince thought that Rapunzel was dead. In his sorrow, he jumped from the high window of the tower and fell to the ground. He was not killed, but his eyes were scratched by the thorns among which he fell. For many years, the poor blind prince wandered sadly through the forest. His only food was the roots and berries he found there. He didn't care about anything. His only thought was that he had lost his dear Rapunzel. At last he came to the desert where Rapunzel lived in sorrow. In the distance he heard her singing, and he knew her voice at once. The blind prince stumbled toward the voice he loved. As soon as she saw him, Rapunzel knew that this poor man in rags was her prince, and she ran into his arms. She was so glad to see him and so sad to find him blind that her tears fell quickly. Two large teardrops fell upon his eyes. Immediately he could see as well as ever he had before. How happy Rapunzel and the prince were to be together again. It didn't matter to them that they were in rags. They forgot the sad years behind them. Hand in hand, they made their way happily through the forest to the prince's kingdom. There they were married amidst great rejoicing and lived happily ever after. Thanks for listening with me. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.